Yes, it is. Uh, it's um, uh, the 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 fun part about it is the audience's reaction. For for me, as an actor, um, it, uh, in in dealing with something that is new, um, the stasis in our production is that after the first number, this white guy walks into this black club, and um, I actually had to start taking Xanax because I was getting a little an anxious about. 1,200 people, 1,400 people in the audience not knowing who the hell I am. <laughs> and then everybody on stage also looking at me the same way. I, I, really, didn't, <laughs> I really didn't take Xanax. But, um, but that, that moment of coming in and, and that moment of danger, um, uh, it is so fun to feel the audience creep forward in their seats and immediately say, well, what's going to happen? <laughs> because it's... It's a recipe for disaster. Um, so yes. Anybody else want to take that on? We'll go to the next. Let's go to the next question because everybody was uh, about all the way over there. Uh. Hi, I'd like to readdress Scott's question and ask again. Don't you think that musical theater and theater has always been the voice of people trying to discover what's going on in the world? You have Leonard Bernstein's Mass. You have Candide. You have anyone can whistle. Yeah, Showboat. Showboat, exactly. Haven't we always done this? And isn't that the right of theater to be the voice where other people can't voice? It's supposed to re reflect your reality, isn't it? That's what I was taught. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a, a lot. There are a lot of different. The kind of theater I'm drawn to is that kind of theater, and. Uh, clearly, the like R and H model and those those serious, well-intentioned musicals and the musicals that you know, like Cabaret or Chicago or Scottsboro Boys, that just are thrilling and scary, uh, speak to me. But you know, there's also a place for Anything Goes or um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of musicals I, like Guys and Dolls. I, I adore Guys and Dolls. I don't know exactly what Guys and Dolls means or what it's what it's saying about the world. Um, and so I. I I mean, I, th I think what, what musicals can do better than almost anything, I think, is create joy. And, and uh, it's very hard to create joy in a play. Uh, you can, but it's really hard. Um, but musicals just effortlessly bring joy uh, if they're done right. And so I don't know if that has to be tied to a, a vision of the world. It's what I love, and I think the great musicals are tied to that. But it doesn't have to be for me. <clears throat> yeah, just, to, just to jump in, I mean, I, I think that what we want to see is something exciting and surprising in any art form, whether you whether you, whether it's a new album, whether it's a movie, or whether it's a musical, um, and I think that you know, like David says, some some of my favorite musicals, like Guys and Dolls or Kiss and <coughs> Kate, um, or Anything Goes. Studying those musicals, getting to getting to musical direct them for a high school, and getting to those scores, actually playing that music informed me as a composer, and so writing something like Next to Normal when I write something like My My Psychopharmacologist and I, for anyone who's seen the show, I mean that's where that's coming from. You know, so all of that craft is what is what informs your voice, and so I think that while while it's wonderful also to to be seeing shows and experiencing shows that are reflecting on the times and have a serious tone to them, I think anything. I mean, I love the opening moment of Spam a lot. I mean, that was totally surprising yeah. and totally hilarious, and I, I and I had the the best time at that show for a totally different reason than I would be at Rent. You know, and I think there's room for all of them, but we, what we want to see is artists who are bringing whatever vigor and craft they can to whatever shows they're working on. And you want to be moved. You want to be taken out of yourself. You want to leave the theater in a different place than you were when you walked in. And you want to be inspired. It's, it's a better alternative to church. <laughs> <laughs> Unless... That, that's the third quote of this. <laughs> <laughs> that's a t-shirt. Yes. Unless you grew up in a Baptist church. <laughs> that's right. You got it all there. I would, I, would, uh, I would just add to this myself that uh, shows like South Pacific and, uh, and Showboat, they were not the norm, they were the exception during, during, this, during the early part of the theater, uh, musical theater. And then, um, to use another example, when uh, the variety show of, of Broadway, the review, the musical reviews, died when television started doing the Ed Sullivan show, things like that, there was no reason anymore for, uh, for theater to do it because it was being usurped by other medium. And to the same extent, I think, one of the reasons why musical theater has, has become more complicated and, 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 and more demanding of, of its audience, because it needs to be in order to be an entertainment that's different from the other entertainments that exist. 
and, uh, and by virtue of being better and richer, it's getting the audience that it gets, uh, who are willing to pay sometimes exorbitant amounts of money. <laughs> uh, over there, I see him. Hi. Uh, any any uh, thoughts about uh, the, the climate becoming so hostile for not famous but, but talented new writers coming into Broadway, the, the way brought the producers are now shutting out, shutting the doors to talking to them, uh, the role of multi-billion dollar corporations hiring superstars and not letting the tradition of bringing in new talent. Sorry. If we had a producer's panel, it might be a better question for them. It, I, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to, um, t we can only, we can only be in the era that we're in. If you look back, and there's certainly always been celebrities, with quotes around it, in Broadway shows. Um, people who had found celebrity in television or radio or something like that coming to Broadway shows. Yes, right now it feels like, as an actor, it feels like it's really hard. And kudos to you guys and for your people holding on to you. It is not the norm, and, and the entire, I can speak for the people that I know in the Broadway community, how excited they were for the two of you, because you guys were there, you were recognized, you got nominated, you won, you know, there, were, there, was, there was a great deal of pride, and it, it kind of also made us go, wow, God, we, that's just not the way it is right now, it just, and hopefully it's, with anything, it's it's an evolution. It's something that we're going through right now. The corporate producer it, is that going to be the future? Are they going to make enough money here on Broadway to to stay here? Are we have we lost the you know the David Merricks? Maybe we want to, um, you know. Have we? But have we lost those you know those showmen that that you know? It's hard to say, but. Um, I, I'm, you could probably talk to a lot of people who would say good riddance to the, the, the David Merricks, the crazy guys, or whatever. Um, I don't know I, 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 if anyone else wants to jump in. I, I think that um, <clears throat> to our producer's credit, and one of them is here to do it today, Randy Adams. Um, um, you know, I, I, there was always that chance of... of we always had in the back of our minds that uh, you know they're going to replace us with you know I don't know Clay Aiken or uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but um, the the fact that they that that the, the entire creative uh, and the producerial side of it uh, decided to really just keep with what was working in the show, which was um, not to sound egotistical, but what we were giving um, and what we had created with them. Um, it was, uh, it can work and it can, and it's working. So, um, I think that there's, uh, from a producerial standpoint, there's always, you know, you're always going to want somebody who's going to be, who's going to draw uh, a number of people to the box office. But I think the great part about what we're doing at Memphis is that, is it's, it's just a big old surprise. There's no expectation um, you know, I wasn't on one life to live for five years. I really wasn't. I really wasn't. Um, so there's no there's no judgment to begin with, and and I think that that's what the audience loves is that they. Uh, it's like watching a kid open a big Christmas present every night. Like it's just a big. It's just it's so much fun because they don't know us, and they don't know the show, and and I think that that's what made Broadway great, and still can. Well, I think in our case, too, it, uh, with Memphis, it, the show is the star, and it introduces you to a galaxy of people who are wonderful and amazing and brilliant at what they do. Our cast is incredible. And so I think that's the beauty of our piece specifically, is that it, the show really is the gem, and you discover all of these wonderful people along the way. Also, you know, I had the opportunity in The Color Purple to cover um, a huge pop star, um, and when she was not on the stage, I was there in her place. And I have to tell you, it was a huge education <laughs> in terms of, you know, what it feels like to, to take the space and be responsible as a central character um, for this experience. And